Hello everyone, this is Sam and in this video we will be reviewing the 5 steps that took me from broke to baron. Indeed, I didn't suddenly get rich from one day to the next and access to mom's credit card was limited to more important matters. Like many of you, I went a long time with very little gold and had to reconsider a lot of my desired purchases as the items I sought were locked behind thousands of gold. If you have also been or are still in such a situation, then this guide is made for you. In order to simplify your usage of this guide, here is an outline for these 5 steps. Of course, they will be detailed much more in their respective sections, but if you want to skip one that you think you've got down, do go ahead. We will first be going over a few ways to earn the starting gold, what you would call the bread and butter, but which we refer to as baguette and beurre de micelle in my lands. Then, we will get into the interesting part of this guide, what you should do when farming isn't enjoyable to you or when you want to take your earnings a step further. Step 2 will focus on ways to spend less, yet achieve the same results as you normally would. It will also teach you the methods we'll use to make profit in the third step, also known as the one where you become efficient. At this point, you will already be quite well off and able to achieve much more than you otherwise would by simply farming your mind to numbness. Steps 4 and 5 will be about investing and developing your economical knowledge in ways that will benefit your gold making and get you more invested into the game and its communities. Now let's get started, but of course, after the intro. Let me start by saying that farming is totally okay, what matters is finding a gold earning method that fits you and your goals. And this is why this guide starts with this step, as many guides would. There are many ways to farm in Guild Wars 2, but only a few stand out from the rest as methods that have the best gold per hour, which is how the efficiency of farms is measured. Indeed, if you're going to do something you don't have fun doing, it should be rewarding. As such, we will open our guide with the tried and true river farm followed by the chest farm. These two go hand in hand as they are on a rotation within the same map. This is what makes this farm genuinely practical. To get started with it, simply open the LFG panel, go into core TIA squads and pick up any that says either river, vinewrath or chest farm and then follow the commander tag. While the chest farm part is rather engaging in terms of participation from the player, the river part, which is basically the meta event of the map, can be done for the most part while remaining AFK. Now I can give you the one true advice that will make farming good for you. Just watch a series or an anime on your second screen or on your third. We all have phones, right? Anyhow, this farm will bring you a constant stream of gold per hour between the items or materials you can sell and the pure gold rewards you will be getting. If you do enjoy this sort of farm, participating in meta events is another option available to you. If you have Heart of Thorns, you can take part in the meta events of each map, although only Auric Basin and Tangled Depths are worth it. The first because of the rare gear it drops in good number, and the second because of one extremely rare and expensive drop, the Chak Exac. If you have Path of Fire instead, participating in a Crystal Oasis meta and then following up with Dragonfall farm is the way to go for good gold per hour. While I keep mentioning meta events, you might not be too familiar with the term, so I'll be leaving a link in the pinned comment to redirect you to a global timer for them so that you can create your own list to go through. My personal pick that has both farms for pure gold and farms for a chance at the jackpot item is the following. Crystal Oasis Casino event, then the Tangled Depth meta event, followed by the Auric Basin's attack on Tarrier, and then either Reba and Chess Farm or Dragonfall for the sweet Volatile Magic. By the way, if you're ever in doubt over how to spend your currencies, I have a guide for that on this channel that I will also link in the pinned comment. Just check the pinned comment out, really. The series of farm mentioned above should get you around 50 to 60 gold over an hour and a half, putting it at around 30 to 40 gold per hour. If you're allergic to farming, if you don't quite enjoy the event design of the game, I can think of another two methods that you could try out. The first is doing map completion. 
While this takes a rather long time, with a fully optimized run starting at 12 hours and longer ones taking upwards to 20 hours, it has a very good return on investment as a single gift of mastery nets you at least 500 gold. So we're talking 25 to 40 gold per hour to account for the time you'll need to gather the other materials for the gift of mastery. Of course, the best return on that playtime investment would be to craft and sell the legendary itself. Still, some structures exist that will very happily help you once you are done with said exploration. You can head out to the Gilwars 2 Exchange subreddit or the Overflow Trading Company Discord in order to get started in that business. The second option is taking part in the competitive game modes. The better one of the two is PvP, where rank mode gives you a pure gold reward for participating in matches and wins rewarding you more, and the rewards track that can get you a lot of materials and expensive drops. Automated tournaments are also something you can participate into. Late night and early morning tournaments have less participants, making it easier to leech the better rewards. And while my knowledge of World vs Sword is limited, I would say that the way to manage in this game mode is quite simple. Pick a good reward track, stack yourself up in boosters and follow the command attack on the map. The more fights you partake in and enemies you tag, the better your reward. Make sure you participate in the objective-related events for maximum rewards. Now you might be surprised as to why I didn't quite add raids and fractal running as possible alternative for gold earning. The reasoning behind that is rather simple. In my opinion, while these two are extremely interesting game modes and probably some of the most engaging ones in terms of gameplay and feeling that you're progressing as a player, they are heavily reliant on the other players in your group being good. Indeed, you can't quite profit over a run that takes ages due to people performing rather poorly. As such, I am avoiding talking about these two as a proper gold making method because they are more of a thing you can enjoy once gold making isn't your prime occupation anymore. So by now, you should have a few hundred gold in your pockets and we're getting to the first question of this guide. Are you fine with farming like this each time you want an item, a skin or to gear up a character? If your answer is yes, all the power to you, keep doing what you're doing. If instead you desire to take your gold making a step further and never have to farm ever again, then you can watch the rest of this guide and hopefully manage to steer away from the barbaric tasks. Step 2 is where you will be learning what to do in order to avoid wasting money. Indeed, way too often have I seen people doing things wrong in terms of handling their gold or items and wasting what could take them hours to farm back. The main point about gold waste is the proper use of the training post. When visualizing an item, there are two columns. The one on the left is the buy orders or the bids made on the item and the one on the right is the sell orders or the listings of said item. You never want to use the right column when buying items. Even though it might not seem much to you over an individual purchase, it really adds up in the longer term and that is gold you could have kept. The second thing is that you're definitely not using your account to its fullest potential. The items you see on the trading post were for the most part made by another player. It would do your valid good to consider making the items you're using. Crafting professions that I would advise leveling up are the following. Chef to 400, Tailor to 500, and Huntsman to 500. Combination of these three lets you craft a lot of items that are rather profitable on the trading post, going from the food used by raiders and fractal runners to the runes and sigils used in meta builds. And this, my friends, leads us to the third step. You've just practiced the acts of flipping and crafting. These are much better gold earners than the farming methods, and all you need for them is a small starting capital. As time goes on, you will get more used to what is profitable and what isn't, but if you don't know where to start, I have a few spreadsheets available for my patrons that will guide you in making solid and constant profit in exchange for a ridiculously small playtime investment. Daily flips are the kind of things you can set up over a few minutes and simply have to keep an eye on for relisting throughout the day. And we're talking 2 minutes to order and 5 to craft for at least 70 to 100 gold over a few markets. This was a huge step in my road to becoming a baron, as time actually mattered to me, moving on from being a student to a working adult. Spending hours farming for what you can achieve with minimal comprehension and dedication really helped free up my time to do things I enjoyed more, such as the rating content I described earlier. Of course, I also used a good chunk of this time to learn more about the economy and thus get even more money, but we will talk about that in a bit. 
First, I believe it would be good to go over what flipping and crafting truly entail, and we will start with the former. Flipping is often described as the basic act of buying low and selling high. Truly, that is an adequate description, but it doesn't help you in making it happen. If I wanted to dumb down flipping, I'd divide it into two categories. High volume, low price, and low volume, high price. That means either you flip a lot of items that cost little, or you flip a few items that cost a lot. Or you can do both, and then you're basically an Arabian oil magnet. Or Zana, who we'll talk about later. Anyhow, when it comes to flipping, you should have a look at items that are often used by the player base. Food and consumables, gear, upgrades, dice, and even some skins can be flipped in very little time. Use resources like gears2bltc.com or my spreadsheets to have an idea of daily average prices and aim within that range. Then you can sell the items at a price that is in the daily sell average and still nets you a good profit. It is easy and simple and although you might slightly struggle at the start, you will get used to it. Crafting will feel safer because it is. You buy ordered and needed materials, you craft your finished product and you list it for the amount you plan for, usually a very low percentage of the daily sales. There again, we have resources in the form of various websites or spreadsheets. Diversification is key. Don't craft simply a couple items or you will find yourself lost if the market evolves. Ask around in your friend list or when playing with others what they use in builds, food, consumables, in order to gather more ideas and keep looking for new markets as updates release. Just remember to keep track of your crafting separately from your flipping so that you don't mix the items where you to flip stuff you also use in crafting. 3 plus 1 is 4 quick math and that's the step we're at now. Have you followed everything so far? Because if you did, you're good already. You have ascended from working for gold to making gold. But you know what's even better than making gold doing something? Making gold doing nothing. We will now be talking about investments. Investing your gold sounds rather dangerous when you look at what it supposedly is. For a few weeks up to a few months, you'll be immobilizing gold that you can't get back unless you're ready to lose on it, or until the price gets good enough that you can profit off of it. Except you're not alone in that game, that means others will be doing the same you're doing. What truly matters here is being a step ahead of the rest. Or two. Or ten. So what you will be doing is the boring part of investing. Looking at graphs and trying to understand the artistic value behind the juicy curves depicted here. Just kidding, but it would be important that you can understand what makes an item go up in price or drop instead. Simply cut, when an item becomes available, it becomes cheap. And when it is not available anymore, that makes it rare and expensive. Black Lion skins are a prime example of this. This is the law of demand and supply, and it has always been the underlying element of market pricing. So how would you go about investing when you know this? Just make sure you pick items that are really limited, not the ones that come back every third rotation of the Black Lion chest. A good example for this, right now, are the Chaos skins. They come back once a year at most, and that makes them a great long-term investment. Try to make investments anytime you have gold that isn't used in your daily flipping or crafting activities. It can seem a little hard at the start, putting 100 gold in skins and knowing you won't see them for another 6 months, but eventually as you keep building up, your investments can become more than just a fallback amount and instead become your way of making gold. I'm personally at that point where I never farm, I don't flip much, crafting happens when I'm truly motivated for it, Meanwhile, investments bring me thousands of gold every month. If you aspire to similar results, be sure to check out my investing videos or explain skin rotations and how to make foolproof decisions. Finally, the last step that took me from broke to baron was actually stepping out of my comfort zone, be it via talking to other players, getting to know other communities, or simply watching a lot of content I understood nothing about, what mattered was gathering knowledge I wouldn't have had through my normal gameplay. There are many other content creators out there and communities that are fully centered around the in-game economy and how to best profit from it. For instance, if you wish to know more about the markets and goal-making ways, Guild Wars 2 Economy is a subreddit that has plenty of well-thought guides and posts that will help you not only in giving you ideas, but also in preparing you for a future update and teaching you how to focus on market fluctuations. 
As I mentioned earlier, Zanar is the best trading post flipper I know and will definitely get you up to pace with his video guides that are as simple as it gets for beginner, on top of featuring live demonstration of the methods they explain. We also went over another community earlier that can help you in selling your gifts of mastery acquired alongside world exploration. That community is the Overflow Trading Company and I will have a link to their Discord in the pin post. Pin post again. While these are all great resources, do remember that the best player you can rely on to get richer remains yourself. Keep up to date with the Guild Wars 2 website on which updates are releasing nates, reach the patch notes as they go live in case you need to quickly buy something about to spike, and don't worry about missing shots at the start. Knowledge can come fast, but experience is something you will build along the way. Remember to watch my videos on these topics if you are ever in doubt, they will prove tremendously useful. Now, if I had to conclude on this matter, I would just say that Gear Wars 2 works the same way as any society does. You have industrial workers at the bottom, CEOs and traders at the top, and it is up to you to pick your side. And now, this video is over. I wish to thank you, because if you are listening to this right now, that means that you went through the entirety of the video, and that is really helpful for me. Now, I also want to thank the people who helped me in making this video happen. Be it my patrons, who are taking their time to review the content that I'm pushing forward, or my friends, such as Zanard, who took the time to review the entirety of the content and offer some ideas and corrections. I really am thankful to these people who are getting invested to help make better content each time. On that note, I wish to thank especially the people supporting me on Twitch or on Patreon for making this possible. And now, I am extending my thanks to every single one of you who is watching this video. By liking, commenting and sharing it around, you're helping make this channel bigger and better, and I am really thankful for this as well. And now, if you want to take all of that a little step further, as I mentioned earlier, I have a Twitch account that you can subscribe to, and I also have a Patreon that you can subscribe to. For said Patreon, there is only one tier at $1, that gives you access to everything. All the spreadsheets I have made so far, all the spreadsheets that will be made in the future, as well as the channel where we discuss all of that, can be yours for that price. I am also thinking of making it possible for people to request spreadsheets at a future higher tier. Tell me about that in the comment section if you think it is a good idea or not. And now, I wish every single one of you some happy trading and to get rich.